Harry's Wife, Part 102.66, Pulling No Punches. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. We have more observations about Harry's wife's conduct and behaviour vis-a-vis, of course, Netflix. This is quite a preoccupation, and of course, waiting to see what, if anything, is released. How does it all fit together? Will the royal family be smeared? Will Charles buy their silence? Will Netflix insist on the warts and all material as it stands? Will the Sussexes try and revise history once again? What do the Telegraph have to say about it? Well, Hannah Finesse, the royal editor, tells us, Harry and Harry's wife's Netflix documentary will pull no punches. With the Queen gone, there is little to stop the Sussexes unleashing their version of events. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are not, it has been said repeatedly, making a reality television series. They are absolutely not making a fly-on-the-wall show about life in their California home either. They may just, however, be making a royal documentary to end all royal documentaries. The last word on the story that has captivated half the world and horrified the rest of it. In the coming months, Prince Harry and Harry's wife are to embark on a round of media activity never before known in royal history. Whoopie-fucking-do, that's something to look forward to, isn't it? A Netflix series and a book from Prince Harry, both part of the blockbuster commercial deals that the Sussexes have signed in the wake of The Departure, formerly known as Megxit are on their way. Timed for release one after the other, at least until the death of Queen Elizabeth II changed everyone's calendars, they are set to be a tour de force of the Sussex's truth, or truth in inverted commas, as some might pointedly call it. For the couple, it is their chance to fully control the narrative. The dream Prince Harry has held since he was an Eton schoolboy, plotting to set up his own newspaper, full of his own royal facts. Rain is wet, and rain on my brother's head trickles down his slap head. Those would probably be the facts that he would come up with now. Now on camera and in print, he is finally in the driving seat for what he hopes will be the final definitive canonical version of his own life. It is interesting, said the Duchess of Sussex recently, in what was for some a mild observation and, for others, a nuclear-level threat. I've never had to sign anything that restricts me from talking. And, of course, it is the narcissist's use of threat, but also shows the contradiction between saying that she was silenced. This is about where they've come from, what they've been through, and where they are said a source familiar with the Netflix show. So it's not really going to tell us anything new, is it? Because we have this thrust down our throats on a daily basis. I think it will explain a lot about the decisions they've had to make and how they've ended up here. I can tell you all about how their decisions have been made. She makes the decisions driven by her narcissism, pursuing the prime aims. He has to go along with it as the victim shackled to her. The article continues... It's been a long time coming. The first rumours of a fly-on-the-wall reality show were printed in The Sun in September 2020 and scathingly denied by Team Sussex. Then, US tabloids printed tales of an at-home-style series for Netflix, with photographs soon emerging of professional camera crews following Harry and Harry's wife during a working trip to New York. You'll remember that. It's where they were rejected from the United Nations for being wired for sound, and Chairman Mao did New York while the bouncing berry of Harlem turned up. Netflix has still not confirmed that any such television series exists. The reluctance to promote what will doubtless be a ratings hit, yeah, albeit for all the wrong reasons, has been remarkable by UK standards, a sign either of the streaming service's last-minute shock and awe PR strategy, or perhaps nerves over whether the programme would ever actually make it to the screen. It will, television insiders believe, be make or break for the Sussex's careers. What careers? Their deal with the streaming giant is reliant on their output, which so far is the square root of fuck all. And they're appearing on screen to a certain degree. 
While Harry's no doubt worthy Invictus Games documentary is still in the works, Harry's wife's animated children's series has been dropped. <laughs> and the pressure is on Netflix, whose business has taken a reputational dive this year after figures showed a drop in subscribers to deliver a hit. And if the New York Post's page six is to be believed, the couple are now at odds with executives and wanting to backtrack on what they have filmed in the wake of the Queen's death. Harry and Harry's wife are panicked about trying to tone down even the most basic language. Well, that's all they ever speak, so there we are. OK, the timing isn't ideal, said one source yesterday, with some understatement. But another insists there is no wholesale editing going on to add or remove bombshell royal revelations. There seems to be a big misconception that they need or want to turn the project on its head, they said. There are always edits being made. But that's how it works. People give notes. Sometimes things are changed if there's time before a deadline. One industry source confirmed to the Daily Telegraph that there has been back and forth on release dates with the multi-episode series penciled in for December. The Harry memoir will follow, probably next year, and likely subject to edits to make it to cause it to make sense after the Queen's death. Good luck with that. It's just going to be a series of fucking potato prints, even down to the basics of clarifying the tenses. Fundamentally, the Telegraph understands there has been no thawing of the relationship between the Sussexes and their British family that will leave a contrite pile of deleted accusations on the Netflix or Penguin Random House cutting floor. If the Sussexes were frustrated by the institution before they travelled to Britain, not a great deal can be said to have changed. While they rubbed along respectfully in public during the 11 days between the crowd's death and her funeral, the chaos behind the scenes over everything from Prince Harry's journey to Balmoral to his military uniform highlighted rather than calmed their differences. Moreover, it was the Queen both Harry and Harry's wife have always publicly lauded above all others. Even a sympathetic American audience will draw the line at her being disrespected after death. With the boss gone, one school of thought goes, there is less to stop the Sussexes unleashing their version of events. But one who knows them insists, the documentary and book are not designed as Harry's version of the story, they are his story, full stop, <clears throat> as told by his wife. This isn't supposed to be a takedown of anyone on anything. Bullshit, they said, predicting people who watch have... Predicting people who watch will have... Greater empathy. Not for these two, they won't. There is no finger pointing. It is likely, however, to explore old ground from a newer, Sussexified perspective. Their time in Britain, their departure, their US life of service, and their plans for the future are all thought to be up for discussion, likely accompanied by wholesome footage of their happy family life. The Lily Bunny Garden and Larder. Fuck? The homemade labels on homegrade homegrown produce named for their toddler daughter and revealed in a recent profile may make an appearance. The latest ends are collaborative, television sources say. The show's director, Liz Garbus, is incredible, Harry's wife said. The biggest clues as to content can be found in her own words in the Cut magazine interview, in which she explained the difference between a historical documentary and a reality docuseries. The piece of my life I haven't been able to share that people haven't been able to see is our love story, she said, telling us something that we already knew about, but pretending that we don't. In other words, the Sussexes are now happy. No, they're not. Asked whether the programme would nevertheless ruffle feathers back in the UK, sources left little doubt. Everything they do ruffles feathers, said one dismissively. It doesn't matter what they say or write, the chatter will be there regardless. Even they didn't mention the royal family at all, people would still say it's a snub. There is little question that the show must mention the royal family. What are Netflix paying for otherwise, wondered one British observer. The level of bombshell has been somewhat preempted by a tell-all Oprah interview, but the fascination still remains. Yes, the fascination of watching a slow train wreck. The sins of the media, a preoccupation of both disinformation campaigner Prince Harry and archetype-fighting podcaster Harry's wife, a.k.a. hypocrisy, are also bound to feature. They need to have the last word, says one who knew them during their time in the royal family. And indeed, as I have explained previously, the narcissist does. See my video, The Narcissist's Last Word. A different source, more optimistic about how the show and book are pitched, said, This is Harry being able to, the first time, talk about his own life while being puppeteered by his wife. 
His family are obviously part of his story, but it's less an exercise in record setting as a means of setting himself free. And then he can move on, except of course he won't because there's books two and three that he needs to do. The question remains, where and just how far from his old home will that move him on to? Millions will watch and hear the Sussexes in action. When the media has shaped the story around you, it's really nice to be able to tell your own story, the Duchess has said, i.e. enabling her to assert control with her truth. The royal family, watching, or not as the case may be, back in Britain, will be largely powerless to stop that story taking hold. The Telegraph understands there are no plans for palace aides to be able to read the memoir or watch the Netflix series before the general public. If they did, the royal reluctance to launch legal action or comment would usually render them silent spectators in the face of all but the most extreme of accusations. When pushed for a response to Harry's public declarations, King Charles's team has tended to fall back on the truth that he loves his son. Prince William, whose different path from his brother is now so evident as he steps into the role of the Prince of Wales, sees no value in the airing of family linen. And perhaps the answer lies with the late Queen, whose own response to the Oprah interview has gone down as a masterclass in gently reminding the public that there is more than one side to every story. Some recollections may vary, she said. Huzzah for Her Majesty. As the Sussexes' recollections spill forth via the combined force of a global TV platform and Burke, the looming threat of both sides becomes reality. There remains a grain of hope for all sides. Once there is nothing left unsaid and no truth left untold, both royals and ex-royals may finally be able to draw a line and move on, except they will not. Who will or won't be watching? King Charles. Let's start with the obvious. In the wake of Harry and Harry's wife's decision to step down as working royals, they've not been shy to fire a few broadsides at the now king, suggesting that he might be in for a pasting. But since the Queen's death, Charles has been riding a wave of public approval, his narcissism allowing him to manage the facade much more effectively for his reverence and work ethic. He even wished the estranged couple love in his first public address as a monarch. He's currently got the upper hand. He'll need to gauge if it's going to stay that way. Queen Camilla even Camilla, as sensible and self-assured as she is, must feel some trepidation about this Netflix venture. Rumours washing around the palace suggest that Harry struggles with his feelings over Camilla, potentially blaming her for ending his parents' marriage. No one wants to be framed as the wicked stepmother, and Camilla and her team have done an incredible job of laying that trope to rest. But this documentary may just give it new life. She'll be watching, with a stiff gin in hand. Thomas Markle Poor old Thomas Markle. While he's not exactly blameless in his dealings with his daughter and son-in-law, this documentary might be his first chance to actually see extended coverage of his grandchildren, Archie and Lilibet. Thomas has previously raged against the couple, assertion of control, and invoked grandparents' rights, which in legal terms don't actually exist. Still, he'll have to weigh up whether it's worth sitting through some likely humiliating revelations from his daughter just to witness some beautifully framed reels of his grandchildren. The Prince of Wales. The jury is out on how William will fare in the documentary. The brothers have a complex bond, but it's not clear whether a shared childhood will spare him from the worst. Encouraging Harry and Harry's wife to join him and Kate to meet well-wishers at Windsor Gate was a masterful PR stroke, he parts past him, and framed him as the bigger person, replete with the maturity and grace one would expect from a monarch in waiting. Care will now need to be taken to ensure Harry's documentary criticisms don't seem off target. William will be invested to see if his smart power moves have paid off. The Princess of Wales Accounts from the days surrounding the Queen's funeral will have you believe that our new Princess of Wales barely looked Harry's wife's way, let alone speak to her, of course, expertly advised. Certainly, the unpleasantness about who made who cry, laid out on a global public stage no less, has a hue of school-ground nastiness about it. Little wonder the two aren't falling over themselves to play nicely. Kate, no doubt, will still be bristling from being named as a distresser of brides, which does not fit with her public image. It doesn't fit because it wasn't true. She and her team will be primed, ready to see what other brand-denting claims are coming the other way. The courtiers. Many of the staff who worked for Meghan and Harry, said to have dubbed themselves the Sussex Survivors Club, will be glued to the screen. The briefing and counter-briefing that has gone on since the Sussexes stepped down has fueled gossip columns across the globe 
and the truth is anyone's guess. Those staff who feel they were wronged will be picking apart every detail, phone in hand, ready to reframe every clever edit and behind-the-scenes shot to eager journalists. After all, recollections, as we're told, do vary. Let's now go below the line. There are over a thousand comments. Petter Seal states, It's interesting, said the Duchess of Sussex recently, in what for some was a mild observation for others a nuclear-level threat. I've never had to sign anything that restricts me from talking. Harry's wife was welcomed into the family as a member of it. Only employees have to sign NDAs. This statement tells us all we need to know about her. It is the ultimate betrayal of the family into which she married. There are few words to describe the sheer wickedness of her character, and none of them would be allowed here. Derek Price, family, means nothing to Harry's wife. Old normal life, they are indeed desperate to have the last word. I have no doubt that Netflix will showcase their perfect life, perfect children, perfect home and perfect relationship. The world will see how truly happy, successful and in love they are. Unfortunately for them, Harry's face conveys the truth of a deeply unhappy man. Gail Hart this is why I cancelled my Netflix subscription. Sheila, hi. I think it's time to invoke the old adage, publish and be damned. They can only have one version of their truth, unless they think they can rewrite that later as well. So, let them spill their whole garbage out and get it over and done with, instead of this constant drip, drip, drip. Afterwards, restore dignity to the county of Sussex by removing the dukedom title and any of the lesser titles he may have. Declare the sprogs are not going to be styled prince and princess and remove them from the line of succession. Then ignore them. They can do no further damage. Let them be the plain Mr. and Mrs. they claim they want to be, like every other Joe and Jane public. Sky Dancer more lies, no one is interested in. Perhaps after this last load of rubbish they'll settle down and live quietly within their means. Please, King Charles, remove the titles and the line of succession from this nasty, talentless, boring and totally irrelevant couple. Dora Beatrice Ridgway, I found it strange that a seven-month pregnant woman wearing stilettos could crouch without a problem at the New Zealand High Commission when they went to offer their condolences. Lisa Johnson. Look, they're mental. Terrifying in their craving for importance. The overwhelming majority can see that. A small bunch of anti-monarchists, identity politickers and befuddled youth think it's clever to admire them. But is that worth worrying about? The only thing that worries me is that the king will ever let them anywhere near the royal family again. With any luck, their truth will burn bridges forever and we can be done with them. Janie Davy, I'm appalled at these two. I really don't know how anyone can do this to their own family, no matter what. Mary Harding. They do it for money, Janie. The filthy money that maintains their lifestyle, with a whole lot of spite from migraine thrown in. E. Hatfield. Given the number of men she got through, and the number of marriages she wrecked, they would have tested him decades ago, even if they hadn't done when he was born. Mark Simpson, if these two decide to take the nuclear option with their truth, His Majesty must take the Danish royal family approach. Official removal of titles, bullies and narcissists must be confronted no matter what guys they hide behind, PC, woke, etc. Paul Anderson, this venal, self-obsessed woman was given an incredibly generous welcome to our country and its royal family, yet she has figuratively spat in our faces. What goes through her vacuous head is beyond me. Josh Yearsley, Daily Telegraph, you know full well that most of your readership, readership is appalled at the behaviour of Harry and Harry's wife. You know full well that most of your readership finds them narcissistic and self-serving to the nth degree. So at this point, the fact you're still pushing out stories like this, just adding to the perception that you're moving more and more to Daily Mail territory, giving all pretense to be a serious newspaper. It's a little sad, really. Sarah Meadows, I have a theory that they do this so that readers can make the comments they can't for fear of litigation. In the past, readers were hardly ever allowed to comment. Madeline Bracey, 
More self-serving. Cry baby, not my fault. They're all against me drivel. Grow up, Harry. We all found you amusing as an overgrown teenager, but now you're a father and need to show some bottle to your children. One hopes when your children are adults, they show you and each other more respect. Susan Higman. Has this pair accomplished a single thing? Have they made one notable contribution to society? How are they in any way relevant? There's nothing compelling about their story except the train wreck aspect. And on it goes, hundreds of comments all putting forward similar distaste for them. Once again, the measure of the people is they can't stand Harry's wife and her ginger poodle. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.